a KQED television production. Right now, I am hungry. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Redwood Credit Union, community banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Business and personal, online and mobile, plus nationwide ATMs. Banking for people who call this place home. Sutter Health CPMC, the new Mission Bernal Hospital, opens August 2018 with all private rooms and comprehensive maternity services. CPMC2020.org. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with seven Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. IRG has thousands of surfaces in stock now. Surfaces. Selection. Service. IRG at MarbleCompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Tech recruiter Tammy Yee dines out almost every night sampling the hottest new eateries all over the Bay Area. But it's childhood nostalgia that brings her time and time again to an icon on Fisherman's Wharf. And acoustic consultant Bob Hodes travels the globe designing sound rooms for musicians and celebs. A fine palate and a sense of adventure mean that as long as it doesn't walk or fly, there's no delicacy he won't try. And independent sales executive Steve Deveris has the tough job of whining and dining for a living. Staying au courant with the changing Bay Area culinary scene is de rigueur for him. One of his favorite chefs is a top chef master and no stranger to the limelight. His restaurant is housed in a century-old mansion in St. Helena called Acacia House by Chris Cosentino. All the produce boxes that were coming in the back door, all the wine boxes that were coming in. California, California, kept on saying it over and over again. So I moved out here in 96 and ended up in San Francisco. I came up to Napa and I would see all these buildings, one of which was actually the building we're standing in right now. And it looked like a New England home. I said, you know, one day I'm gonna hopefully have a restaurant in one of these buildings. Now 20 years to the date I do. My name is Chris Cosentino. I am the chef here at Acacia House in Las Alcobas Resort in St. Helena, Napa Valley. When you think about Napa, you think about beautiful wines here, and all those grapes came from another part of the world. Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, and Germany. So we're gliding through these different cultures, blending them together just like the melting pot that we are here in Napa. Seeds came over with people too. And I think that's what allows us to create such a unique, diverse menu, but that at the same time, it fits harmoniously with the wine in the valley, and it's like a big melting pot. My goal is to give the guest a taste memory. I wanna find that tiny little slice where I can slide right in next to that amazing meal they had in Paris, or that dish they had from grandma. I'm just fighting for that tiny sliver. My goal is just to make people happy. Now, Steve, um, this is quite an impressive place, isn't it, when you drive up to it? It feels like you're driving up to a, a mansion you'd yeah. see in Georgia. Right. I've been watching them build that hotel for two years, yeah. um, excited about when it would open. I didn't know it was going to be a Chris Cosentino restaurant at the time, but it just looked beautiful. When you walk in, they walk you through this amazing looking bar, mm -hmm. and it feels like you're in someone's home, and they're drink, specialty drink, is this margarita, which sort of reminds me of a Pisco Sour. Yeah. It's sort of foamy and they shave lime on top. It's and a little it's, frothy. Yeah, and, it's frothy yeah. and foamy mm -hmm. and yummy. And uh, it's, it's really, really nice. To, you could just hang at the bar and be perfectly happy. We had 
also a bottle of wine, a Barbaresco, a 2008. Their beverage director has put together quite an impeccable mm -hmm. wine list. You yeah. can have great champagne, you know, Ruinard all the way to um, great Spotswood or Schaefer. Yeah, I love the decor. Like, mm -hmm. it looked like something where, um, like how I would decorate, you know, my home or decorate a restaurant if I had one. Yeah. Tell me about what you, food-wise, what do you dig into first? We started with a chicory salad, mm -hmm. which is really large portion of this and I don't think I've ever even had a chicory salad before, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was fresh and delicious and light and lemony. And big, obviously, by and the way big. you're doing this, right? It was it's big. Great chicory. salad. Great salad. You Fantastic had that as well, Bob? Fantastic salad. Yeah. Had the chicory salad, big hit at the table. Mm -hmm. We had three appetizers, okay. and I think that's where this restaurant really shone. Um, we had the mochi crudo. Um, that was probably my least favorite of the three. Um, I thought it was kind of cut, you know, um, a little bit too small, but the presentation of the dish was really beautiful. Nothing bad, it just wasn't our mm -hmm. favorite. Um, the two I absolutely loved were the foie gras um, and then also the um, local lamb tartare. Amazing. You know, I've never tried lamb before and it can usually come off, you know, pretty gamey, mm -hmm. especially when it's raw. So right. eating this, um, I could not tell that it was beef or lamb, right. which is probably a testament to how clean it is. Right. Um, so the foie gras, what was really good were there were fermented blueberries, mm -hmm. so it added that sort of pop of acidity. I thought the hamachi crudo was excellent. Mm -hmm. I think that it was a really nice balance between the zestiness and the tenderness of the hamachi. Right. The Caesar salad was, I hate to say it, but nobody liked the Caesar salad. Ah, okay. It was, you love the chicory salad, but not the Caesar. <laughs> they had put a, like a dusting of shiitake mushroom powder mm -hmm. over the top, and it made the whole thing kind of taste like dirt. When you got down to the very bottom, where that powder hadn't touched anything, the salad was excellent. Right. You know, nice and crispy, a really well done Caesar dressing. Absolutely. All right, main courses. So I ordered what I think is their signature dish, which is this Iberico pork schnitzel. <laughs> and I had heard oh, stories that yeah. the, a hit. he creates sort of a lemony, creamy sauce, mm -hmm. which is rich but delicious. It's also a huge portion. My wife is Dutch. She's used to schnitzel and people went nuts over that. Mm -hmm. On top was caviar, a dollop of caviar on top, and the pork was nice and crispy, but so tender and tasty inside. What other main courses? So I've been have? hearing right. that they had one of the best burgers in the valley, and it was a really great burger. It comes with gruyere and caramelized onions, and they serve it with Kensington ketchup and mm. literally amazing fries. Everyone really loved that. You know, I'm very positive about the food at this place, <laughs> and it's high level of artistry. Right. You know, the presentation of all the food is really super. It makes you want to eat it right away. So the mushroom risotto, maybe the best mushroom risotto I can remember ever having. Mm -hmm. Two types of mushrooms, miyataki mushrooms and crispy anokis, mm -hmm. and both lovely flavorful mushrooms in their own right. And then the flavor imbued throughout the risotto. I couldn't get over it to tell you the truth. The monkfish was very good and uh, there was this brown butter sauce on it that it left you speechless. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't even know what to say. Speechless. Yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it, and what about desserts? Ooh, well, I got something simply and aptly titled cake. <laughs> um, and it had burnt cinnamon ice cream, a Greek yogurt, and white chocolate tres leches. But it felt like there were like seven or eight different textures in this slice of cake, um, but it was so good. I ate every last bite. The eclairs, there were actually three of these little layer cakes, and they just do an incredible job of melding all the flavors together. And, and so the little layer cakes each had their own little fruit flavor. I liked the, mm -hmm. the pumpkin especially. What was most impressive once again was when they brought these things out, you didn't want to eat them. Right. You just want to look at them. All right, this is your spot. Steve, wrap it up for us. Elevated comfort food in a beautiful setting in Napa Valley. All right, and Bob. Very high level of artistry for the food and presentation. And Tammy. Well-balanced, versatile menu by Chris Cosentino. Highly recommend. All right. If you would like to try Acacia House by Chris Cosentino, it's on Main Street in St. Helena. The telephone number is 707-963-9004. It's open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $45.
frequent trips to Tokyo led Bob Hodes to acquire a taste for the delicate flavors of Japanese cuisine. He has a passion for all things pescatarian. He's even dined on fugu, the poisonous puffer fish. While that particular delicacy isn't on the menu, there are plenty of other fish dishes to tempt Bob's palate at his pick, Iasare in Berkeley. My name is Sho Kamio. I'm a chef and the owner at the Yasare West Berkeley in California. I was opened uh, my first restaurant 23 years old in northeastern Japan. We have a bay, Pacific Ocean, and the farm, and the fishermen there. It's a kind of similar location in the Bay Area. Seven years ago, my hometown wiped out in a tsunami earthquake disaster. I had a shock. I moved to California 18 years ago. So this is my second culture. So it means I grew up in Japan and then second life in California. I'm trying to combine, making one amazing Japanese California cuisine. Yasare means be here, which means I'd like to make people comfortable and uh, relax. If you're looking for typical your Japanese restaurant, this is not Yasare. So I'm sorry, sushi is not coming. Please sit down, trust me, you will see more diversity in my hometown dishes. I'm really happy, I will enjoy every day with my new venture. I made the right decision. All right, Bob, so you've been to Tokyo a lot. Does this um, remind you of Tokyo? Does it bring the best of Japanese cuisine to Berkeley? Well, I'm going to have to say that it does bring the best of Japanese cuisine to Berkeley, but it's more of a fusion. I, I think that it takes it to a level that is unexpected and I never found in Japan. And how's that. the sound? We got to get that out the of the way. The sound <laughs> is excellent. You Let's can have the a acoustics very out of the romantic way conversation without the neighbors hearing you. Okay. It's a fairly small restaurant. Mm -hmm. The ambiance is very nice and more country Japanese style. Right. They also have a patio out front when the weather's nice. The number one thing is their three taste risotto, which has uni, oyster, and cauliflower puree. My wife calls it orgasm in the bowl. Well, there you go. Okay. The tastes are all separate, but then all melded in together. Mm -hmm. uh, it sits in this lovely little broth. Okay. So there's a wonderful fusion within the risotto itself. Um, I thought this place was great and a little jewel. Mm -hmm. They have an amazing uh, sake menu. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, we didn't try wine because the sake was so good. But, but they do know. have some nice Nika whiskey too, some Japanese whiskey, yeah. as well as really beautiful um, sake. It's funny that you say, because you're a sound guy, because that was, the, t in my opinion, the loudest restaurant of the three. Wow. Well, I mean, maybe we just had a, a very raucous crowd that night, um, but it is small. I thought the restaurant was beautiful, you know, simple, contemporary looking restaurant. Mm -hmm. Other than the noise, I, I had a great time there. Right. We started out with a, a monkfish liver, which I think was their amuse that they mm -hmm. offered from the chef. It was delicious. And then we ordered the hamachi crudo. And I don't know what the spice was, but it was something I had never tasted before. And it was really good. Very fresh. Uh, my favorite dish was one of the appetizers, which was a tiger shrimp tempura. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of like a bird's nest. And there was vegetables mixed in. And it's called kakiage. Exactly. Have you been to this restaurant or heard about it before? Um, I had not. I was really excited. Um, so we got there and it was a Tuesday, so it was, it was actually their ramen night. A little mm. bit disappointed actually because ramen's not, um, it, it's not my favorite. Um, yeah. So I, I got in, yeah. yeah, and I asked them if they could, um, you know, give us any other regular menu items because there was a spaghetti dish I had really wanted to try, mm -hmm. but they said no. It was it was pretty much only ramen. It's only ramen on Tuesday night. Tuesday. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Um, we did get the kakiage tempura, um, and that was interesting. I've never seen anything like it, where it was sort of like a mishmash of, you know, maybe shredded vegetables mm -hmm. into like this triangular sort of cake. But it was light. It was flavorful. I actually really liked the broth too that came mm -hmm. on the side. Um, yes. Really, really nice flavor. So it's I enjoyed that positive. dish. 
Yeah. And what about the ramen? Yes, we okay. did get the ramen. We got the um, char siu miso ramen. Um, so the meat was a little bit rubbery. Overall, um, it was it was okay. And the the noodles were well cooked, though. The egg was well cooked, um, and they did have sort of a, a piece of seaweed in there, which I thought was interesting. So it provided that umami sort of flavors. The best starter for us in, in the crudo section. There's a beet cured ocean trout. And I had it, that too. That it was good. It's really good. Uh, and it has some crispy gobo in it and ginger. And when you take a bite of the gobo with the trout, the gobo is crispy and the trout is melt in your mouth. That was one of my yeah. favorite dishes, mm -hmm. the, the trout. Mm -hmm. My favorite one was the tempura tiger shrimp thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's only one dish I didn't like of the whole night. It sounds really great, which is a bacon wrapped mochi and it was very chewy and very salty and very hot but every other dish was really good and our main course was a yellow tail collar mm -hmm. um, but, but the presentation of this uh, hamachi collar was uh, i took a picture of it because it was so beautiful and it looked like a painting right. I and mean, they really do a nice job what was the most amazing thing about this place is it has sort of neighborhood prices mm -hmm. i mean i didn't expect the prices to be as good as they were a great local place to go the pancakes. It's called Okonomiyaki. These lovely layers of soft cabbage, tiger shrimp, and squid. And then also they put a sauce on top. It's another one of those things where they take the flavor palette and they jack it up. Well, the chef was and at Yoshi's prior he, to this. Yes, he yeah. was, yes. Mm -hmm. And Ozumo also. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Your restaurant, wrap it up for us. If you want the next level of Japanese food, not a sushi bar, and you want to have a great dining experience with great service, ESRA in Berkeley. All right, and Tammy. For light, fresh California take on Japanese food, take your friends to ESRA. Okay, and Steve. Sort of a Japanese local gem. I would go there if I lived in Berkeley all the time. All right. If you would like to try ESRA, it's on 4th Street at Hearst in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-845-8100. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are recommended. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is $45. If you're a whiskey lover like I am, you must try one of the versions from Japan. Whiskey is the large umbrella category, and depending upon where it's made, the name and style are reflective. You can have smooth Irish whiskey or spicy Canadian rye, sweet or American bourbon, or peaty scotch direct from Isla. Japanese whiskey is often compared to elegant styles of Scottish whiskey rather than the sweeter American ones, and it's easy to see why, with similar hilly topography, cool climates, and endless supplies of pure water. Japanese whiskey is also spelled the same way as Scotch, without an E. Its creation dates to the 1920s and 30s when several important Japanese figures fell in love with Scotch. They founded distilleries Suntory and Nika. Now Japanese whiskey commands prices on par with Scotch. Aged versions of Hibiki and Nika crafted in classic Scottish coffee stills serve up complex, rich styles to drink neat or with a splash. While lighter whiskey bottlings from Toki and Kikori are perfect for highballs and cocktails. I think it's time for a trip to Japan. I mean, I'm dressed and ready to go. Kanpai. Fisherman's Wharf has been a magical place for Tammy Yi since she was a child. Fond family memories and fresh crab are what brings her back to a San Francisco mainstay of more than 60 years. Located at Pier 43 and a half, it's Franciscan Crab Restaurant. I love walking into the restaurant and seeing the amazing view. Every day it's something different. Uh, you never know if the fog is going to show up or not. I am Stephanie Etienne, and I'm the general manager of the Franciscan Crab Restaurant. We have three tiers in our restaurant. There is not really a bad seat in our house at all. No matter where you sit, there's an angle of San Francisco that you'll see. My name is Juan Carlos Becerra. I'm the executive chef here at Franciscan Crab Restaurant in San Francisco, California. All our seafood comes from local suppliers that are in the area also here in Fisherman Wharf. Dungeness crab is the best tasting crab. It's more meat than others, and it's, the meat is sweeter. 
we always get the largest one for our restaurants because it has the more meat. The crab is served with a special, you know, crab crackers and the little forks, you know, so you can pick the meat, but it's fun when you get your hands dirty too, you know. We have a lot of combinations and the cast iron skillets. People really enjoy it when they come to the table, they're sizzling, you know. People around the other tables are looking at it and it's like, what is that, what is that? Sometimes they just order by coining, you know. All right, Tammy, you check out all the hottest, latest restaurants, but this is kind of an iconic, classic San Francisco spot. Well, I love this place. So um, historically, it's kind of a big deal in San Francisco. So um, was formed in 1957. I think it brings back a lot of memories. So I grew up in Fremont in the Bay Area native. So my family would take me to the wharf and we'd walk around, you know, the pier and, you know, have this delicious Dungeness crab at this restaurant. So I think they have some really solid seafood dishes. Um, lots of versatility in the menu, so a lot of different options. Love the 50s vibe, um, but really unpretentious, and I think it's just a perfect spot to take people who aren't from um, San Francisco. The whole restaurant is made out of glass right. from yeah. the side on the side of the water, so the views are unbelievable. Right. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Yeah. It screams San Francisco, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It really is a fun ambience. They've got pictures that they've been taking for years and years and years of celebrities. Right. I mean, there's hundreds of pictures everywhere, and it's just kind of fun to wander around. I always get this, you know, sizzling platter of seafood, so a combo of mussels, crab, and shrimp. I'm a huge seafood connoisseur. I think my friends, like, know me as that crab lady. Like, I love seafood, <laughs> so I, you know, sometimes I'll go by myself and I'll just have this, like, giant Pl like sizzling platter of seafood served to me and then it's kind of sizzling in this like garlic buttery sauce really really good what is your favorite a uh, crab hands down okay yeah. yeah yeah it's so good for me the mussels knocked it out of the park fat juicy perfectly cooked all by themselves they were excellent i didn't want to put any of the dipping sauces in but i didn't like the roasted crab i'm you know, it was dry, really dried out. Mm -hmm. I thought that maybe it was too imbued. With, I don't ever think that you could have too much garlic, but there was something about it that didn't do it for me. Mm -hmm. The abalone was sort of a mixed bag, okay? The doré coating overpowered the beauty of the abalone, but the doré itself, that coating was very good. It was delicious. We took the doré off, and then we ate the abalone. It was perfectly cooked, tender, flavorful, but the two together didn't work for you. Didn't work for me. Okay, and what about you, Steve? I definitely crabbed out. So I started with crab cakes, <laughs> and I did crab chowder, <laughs> and I did a crab Louis salad. <laughs> so I had crab. Um, the crab trifecta. Yeah, the crab trifecta. I had very low expectations of this place. Um, now, why is that? Because it's on the wharf, and you're kind just, of thinking touristy, and... It, the name sounds like a tourist trap, and um, I just didn't expect a lot. Yeah. I think that if you're going for what you typically go for, it's perfect. Right. It is touristy. It's from the photos, and they don't show them there. They're just pictures of celebrities as you walk up, and the menus are laminated like you would expect from a tourist restaurant. But the seafood is fresh. Um, the service was great. Uh, the views are, as I said, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So the crab cakes were triple fried, so they were very crispy mm -hmm. with some chopped vegetables. Um, the chowder had a huge hunk of Dungeness crab, which was the best part of the chowder. The actual chowder itself was a potato-based chowder, very bland. With, I put a heavy douse of Tabasco on it, which made it taste better. And the crab louis salad was huge and very fresh crab. And I, but the louis dressing was reminding me of the dressing I grew up with from the grocery store with Kraft Thousand Island dressing. Thousand Island, man, yeah, come on. Yeah, well, yeah. I, we had the same experience. We got the Caesar salad with crab, and the crab was lovely and fresh and tasty. And the Caesar was just as bland as bland could be. And it was just, a, it was a disappointment. You know, it's touristy, but I think it's its always been a solid choice. Everyone, mm -hmm. you know, that I've brought has been like, honestly, like this was a good spot. Like it, right. it did the job. 
Well, as yeah. you said, it's it's go with expectations, right? I mean, this is you, you're going for crab in a beer, probably in a beer. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but I would definitely go back to this place. I've also had uh, the crab fondue, which is also really good as an appetizer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really thick and rich, um, and it's super cheesy. It's got plenty of lumps of crab meat, which I love. I hate it when they skimp out on the crab meat, and they definitely don't do this here. Um, so with a couple pieces of bread, and it's you know served piping hot, really, really delicious. Yeah, I and what did it. you feel about value? Because, you know, crab is expensive, seafood's expensive. Uh, it's not an inexpensive place. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, I would go with the expectations that you're going to spend some money, have a good time, and uh, enjoy the view. All right, Tammy, your spot, wrap it up for us. For solid seafood dishes, take your out-of-towner friends to Franciscan Crab. All right, and Bob? I don't think I'll be back. They have some very good dishes, a great spot for tourists. Okay, and Steve? Fun, amazing views go at sunset. If you would like to try Franciscan Crab Restaurant, it's on Fisherman's Wharf at Pier 43 and a half in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-362-7733. It's open every day for lunch and dinner, 365 days a year. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I have to thank my guests on this week's show. Steve Deveras brought us to a Napa Valley gem, Acacia House by Chris Cosentino in St. Helena. And Bob Hodes shared his love of elevated Japanese fusion at Iasare in Berkeley. Finally, Tammy Yi, who treated us to a blast from her past at the classic Franciscan Crab Restaurant on Fisherman's Wharf. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Cheers. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has thousands of surfaces in stock now. Surfaces. Selection. Service. IRG at MarbleCompany.com. Total Wine and More offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More now with seven Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Sutter Health CPMC, the new Mission Bernal Hospital, opens August 2018 with all private rooms and comprehensive maternity services. CPMC2020.org. Redwood Credit Union, community banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Business and personal, online and mobile, plus nationwide ATMs. Banking for people who call this place home.